23 years ago, it was the year 2000, when I became a father of a disabled son. Life was so good till then. I was a naval commander, 15 years of service, white uniform, three golden stripes on my shoulder, a braided cap, saluting, sailing, wanted to be an admiral, cleared staff college. All was so beautiful till then. My wife, one and a half decades with the Taj group of hotels, deep dived into the corporate world, running the corporate race. The whole family was hunky-dory till then, till a doctor wrote on my 18-month-old son's prescription the word autism, question mark, question mark. Autism? We didn't know what is autism then. Those are not the days with smartphones and Wi-Fi in your cars and airports and offices. So we did find out that autism is a lifelong disorder. It is an intellectual disability. It is a disability which is on a spectrum where people with autism could have impaired social and communication skills. They could have impaired speech. They could be hyperactive. They could have dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculus. Maybe they would never be able to study or go through college or a business or even get married. We said, really? Is that what is going to happen to a son? And then started the race. We scrambled. Fragile X chromosome testing in genetic labs, sending blood samples to Europe for mercury toxicity, MRIs, EEGs, wires plugged all over a two-year-old child's brain. And for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, I prayed to God that something wrong should come out in these tests. Because if there would be something wrong, probably it will have a quick cure. Because autism does not have a cause or a cure. No injection. There is no operation. There is no surgery. There is no medicine in this world which can cure autism. And then started the race for a school for my three-year-old son. I went as a commander in my white uniform, saluting all principals, owners, directors of schools in the NCR, dozens of them. Things were different 20 years back. They said no. Lamenting with anguish, anger, desperateness, disgust, and even depression. I remember that New Year's Eve of the year 2002, where me, and my wife, we held hands, we wept, and we spoke to our three-year-old son. He couldn't understand anything what we said. He was hyperactive, he was mute, non-verbal, saliva drooling down his mouth, always scratching his body, moving around in circles, standing on his toes in a corner. That's what our son was doing at that time. But we spoke to him. And we told him, we said, son, this race of life, we are going to run together. And so, we will quit. We will give up our so-called illustrious careers in the Navy and the corporate world. We'll build a school of our own, an international school. And we'll make you study in that school and it will be open for special needs children. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is not important is the school. I won't even tell you the name. What is not important is what happened to my son in the last 20 years. But the marker, the flag, the pointer I'm making here is a decision. Parents of special needs children have to take a quick decision. A decision to include their lives into their child's and the child's life into theirs. I don't mean giving up your jobs, no way. But you know what? Hundreds of them, I met a few, where the dad say, listen, I'm the earning member of the family. I come at 2 o'clock. I travel. How do you expect me to play soccer with my son or give him time? And the mother says, I have other children. And I'm exhausted by the end of the day. How do you expect me to give time? 
But you know what? I have this wonderful maid and that one has a wonderful governess. And you know, this is a wonderful therapist who gives 12 words a year. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Your children need empathy and not sympathy. They need you to have a role play in their lives and only then they could be better. You may ask, what's so great about bringing up children with autism? Well, it is difficult. An 18-year-old autistic child may have a brain of a 5-year-old. What do you expect out of an 18-year-old son? Probably driving a bike, going through a class, maybe more than average grades, having friends, doing parties, being able to communicate, being able to cross a road, go to a supermarket, pick up some things, pay at the counter, get a change back and count that it is right, isn't it? Not so with people with autism. It is difficult. When we used to walk with our little son into a restaurant, he would run to a table and start eating from somebody's table. And he would be admonished and scolded and we would be called bad parents. Indisciplined son, they would say. Some of them have obsessions. Our son at eight years would go and stare at the earring of a woman at close quarters. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you can get away with this at five, six, seven, eight years of age. But imagine when the child grows up, a 20 year old with a mustache and a beard and tries to do that, staring at a lady's earrings in a close quarter, in a public place, what can happen? Or walking into an expensive store like a jewelry or a watch store and picking up something and just walking out without paying, he would be labeled as a thief. So you got to work. You have to intervene. And these are the challenges which you need to make sure that you are overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, many times parents try to hide their children with special needs. I've seen adults who are autistic and their parents not talking to talking about them. When parents with special needs, they go to therapists, they are told, don't hide them in your closets, rooms and houses. Brandish them. Show them off. Because the only way not to get embarrassed is to get embarrassed. If you do not move them out to society, they will not learn how to live in that society and the society will not learn how to persevere and tolerate them. And that is inclusion. And then came golf. We are a family of golfers. Not great golfers, but passionate golfers. So we would feel very guilty teeing off in the golf course, leaving eight-year-old Ranveer, my son, around. And he would just hover on the greens, which is not incidentally allowed, and we would feel very guilty. So we went to a few of our friends and we said, how can we include him into golf? Can he learn golf? And they said, golf? No way. It's a complex game. It's a game which requires focus. It needs an attention span of four hours and he has only five minutes. It needs a repetitive swing to move the ball. The golf course has got hazards. It's got lakes, it's got forests, it's got sand, it's got bushes. And you need endurance of four hours of about five kilometers. And then we met this angel coach by the name of Anitya Chand, an ex-Asian Games player. And here is a marker, ladies and gentlemen. He said, why do you find reasons why your son cannot play golf? Find reasons why he can. Golf is a quiet game and he's quiet. So the golf course is quiet. It needs a repetitive swing and all autistic people like routines. So let him be obsessed with golf. And he said, damn it, you four will have the time of your life for four hours every day when you golf as a family, which can never happen at home. So just do it. And then everything is history. He started beating us on the golf course, at, started going for tournaments at 12 years of age. 
He won the first gold medal for India at the Asia Pacific Golf Masters. At 15 years of age, he went to the World Games and got another gold for India. 2019, he went to Abu Dhabi in the World Games, got a silver medal for India, nine national medals, five Asia Pacific medals. The government gave him cash awards and a BEAM award. He became the Sports Illustrated Person of the Year, six times Limca Book of Records holder. My God, it all just went on. And I have never been invited or felicitated by Sachin Tendulkar and Virat Kohli and Kapil Dev and Milka Singh. He was. He's got followers now. A blue verified account, a blue tick account on his coup, on Twitter, on his Facebook. He's invited by Grant Thornton, Tata's, Microsoft's all there on social media. To speak, to speak, yes. He used to say, pa, pa, at about six years of age. And that too by blowing a candle, pa, for one candle, pa, for the second one, to say, papa, making speeches. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. But it is not about just what Ranveer did. It is about an autistic child. A marker here, ladies and gentlemen. There are thousands of them in this world. Artists, musicians, drummers, singers. Mathematicians, graphic designers, don't look at your child with a lens of disability. Look at him with a sense, the lens of ability, a true lens of ability. And you'll find that hidden talent, hone it, and he'll rule the world. And for all of you who are not parents of special needs children, look out for an autistic person in your family in your neighborhood and your workplace. Trust you me, he would be the best friend you'll ever have because he'll never cheat, he'll never lie, he'll never let you down, he'll always be there for you, one call and he'll always care for you all his life. That's what every autistic person is. And when you walk up to that person to extend your hand of friendship, tell yourself, this person is autistic, but autism is not a disability. It is one of the most powerful abilities a human being can have. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.